know you brought the loudmouth kid back to us. I'm sorry. I wanted them to hang him. <laughs> well, he amuses me. You done good, Arthur. Loyalty. Well, I should get back to it. All right. What do you want? Uncle told me something about a train. <sighs> what did he say? Mary Beth overheard something about a train full of wealthy folk rolling down through Scarlet Meadows just south of state border. Yes. You need help with it? I ain't even sure about doing it. Come on. At night, not too guarded, it's perfect. Nah, I ain't thought it through. <laughs> you know, stopping a train, pain in the ass. Sure. But what if we could force a train to stop? Well, of course. We get a wagon full of something flammable, oil. Put it on the tracks. If they see it, if they know they either have to stop or die. Ain't no train driver wants to be cooked alive. That is kind of brilliant. Uh, for you. <laughs> and that is a real idea. I think that's the first time you ever had one of them. <laughs> Shut up. You might be the first bastard to ever have half his brains eaten by a wolf and end up more intelligent. So we're doing it? Yeah, we're gonna need ammunition, guns, look real frightening, and some dynamite to open up the train. I'll get the supplies. Gotta head into town for Abigail anyway. Don't even ask. You go find us an oil wagon. Yeah, I know just the place. They're always heading into that refinery. There's an old rundown shack just over the border, north of a place called Dewberry Creek. Leave it hidden somewhere near there. You gonna sit? Did you miss me, big man? <laughs> like the crops miss the sun when it's stuck behind a cloud, my boy. Can't you help a fella out? Hey, brother. Hey, oh, mister. Whatever. Mister. I never learned your name. I never did. You're like a brother. But I didn't learn your name. And I said to myself, Mickey, you never learned that fella's name. Now, you'll never see him again. And you'll be sad. Like when your poppy passed, because you slept on it. What's your name, mister? Arthur. 
Arthur? My uncle's name was Arthur. Uncle Arthur, we called him on account of his name. It's a fine name, a strong name, like a king. You could be my king, Mr. Arthur. Yes, you could. Hey, boy. Around here, you'll give the wrong impression. Don't make this difficult. God damn cop. Just shut up, damn it. God damn idiots. It's not like I stay in the game much by talking to you guys trouble.
Please, friend, you gotta help me out here. Come on, please. I'm about done here. If I don't get these shackles off soon, I'm on it. Please. There you go. Oh. Oh, thank God. Oh, well, I have waited to hear that noise for so long. Yeah, I bet. I, I wish I could give you some money or, well, you know, I might have something of interest. A fellow on the chain line jawed on about this little homestead owned by some lonely drunk. You know, he keeps a lot of money stacked away. Dead south of Rhodes, on the river. You sure I'm the right person for this sort of information? I ain't saying nothing. Do with it what you will. Just keep out of sight for a bit. Oh, I intend to.
You know, these hides and furs can also be done up into coats and boots and such. Beyond my skills, but there's a trapper that travels around these parts, Canadian feller, Skill Tanner. He can make just about anything. You should drop in on him sometime. Thank you, Arthur. Okay, I'll keep my eye out for him. All right. Mr. Morgan. You're a good kid. Thanks, Uncle Arthur. How are you holding up? Not very well. No, I'm sorry. It will get better eventually. All right, well, I should be getting on. All right, Arthur. I'll go get him. Meet us at the wagon when you can. Sure. See you, Arthur. Ain't that dumb. <laughs> Next time, let the wolves eat all your brain. Then you'll be a genius. energy money here it is thank you and your husband is he well he's dead combination of beatings and sickness did for him my deepest condolences madam and mine to you for all your wretched lives <laughs> didn't mean for the fella to die he was sick, Mr. Morgan. Not our fault. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, I won't disturb you. Take care, Arthur. Shout out, Lenny. Hey. Yep. Hey, Arthur, come here a minute. What is it? 
Can I ask you a favor? Probably not. Very funny. Would you do something with Jack? He seems kind of down. All this upheaval can't have been easy on the poor kid. Why? Because I'm your preferred nursemaid? Because you do what you say. Please? Okay. I'll take him in the morning. Thank you. What you up to? Playing. Anything fun? I guess. You want to come fishing with me? Fishing? Sure. You're... <laughs> it's about time that you started to earn your cape. Okay. Good. Let's go get your pole then. Now, you do have a fishing pole, don't you? I sure do. Uncle Jose made me one. Good. Well, let's go get it then. Go catch us some fish. <laughs> yeah. I'll mount up and lift you on when you're ready, Miss Gasco. kid no more. Well, your mama might disagree. There are a few other women, I guess. What do you mean? Uh, I'm just talking silly. <laughs> it's been a tough few weeks up in that snow. I like the snow. Yes, but not like that. When are we going back to the other camp? The one near Blackwater? Yeah. Well, we're not. This is our spot. For now, anyway. I forgot a storybook there. We left so quick. Well, I'm sure someone can get you another storybook. Really? When? Well, <laughs> we'll see. Got fish to catch first. You see that there? So up. Uh, about as any. Where should we stand, Uncle Arthur? Down by the shore. Come on, follow me. I can't wait to get started. Now first... some bait. I'm gonna use some cheese. Cheese? Bellier the better. Now, cast your line. Swing the rod back over your shoulder and bring it forward in a smooth motion. Use your wrist, not your elbow. Jack is wait for a fish to take the bait. How do I know when I've got a bite? Well, if you feel the tip of your fishing rod just twitching, don't yank it yet. 
That just means one's nimbling. If you feel a hard tug, that's a fish going for the bait, so yank hard to hook it. I think you've got a bite. Look! Got one, Jack. Pull him in! See him fighting there, Jack? That's when you gotta be careful. You, you'll break the line. Best to wear him out first before you try to reel him in. Look, Jack, it's a bluegill. It's almost as small as you. We should really throw these smaller ones back. Give him a chance to grow up a bit. Can I take a break from fishing? I want to make something. Okay. Pick some of those red flowers. I'll be right back. You gotta stick at things, Jack. I know. Fishing sure is boring, Uncle Arthur. <sighs> I know. Boring as hell. But then, something happens. And you can get food for days. Really? If you're lucky. But until then, you just sit and wait. And Try not to worry. It's good for you. It's good for you? I guess. Huh. Hey, look at this. The what? This necklace I made. Necklace? For Mama. Sure. What a fine young man. And in such complex circumstances. Arthur, isn't it? Arthur Morgan? Who are you? Yes, Arthur Morgan, Vanderlyn's most trusted associate. You've read the files. Typical case, orphaned street kid seduced by that maniac silver tongue and matures into a degenerate murderer. Agent Milton, Agent Ross, Pinkerton Detective Agency, seconded to the United States government. Nice to finally meet. We know a lot about you. Do you? You're a wanted man, Mr. Morgan. There's $5,000 for your head alone. $5,000? For me? Can I turn myself in? We want Vanderlyn. Old Dutch. I haven't seen him for months. That's so? Because I heard a guy fitting his description robbed a train belonging to Leviticus Cornwall up near Granite Pass. Oh, ain't that a little old-fashioned nowadays? Apparently not. Listen. This is my offer, Mr. Morgan. Bring in Vanderlyn, and you have my word you won't swing. Oh, I ain't gonna swing anyways, Agent uh, Milton. You see, I haven't done anything wrong, aside from not play the games to your rules. Spare me the philosophy lesson. I've already heard it from Mac Callender. Mac Callender? He was pretty shot up by the time I got to him. So really, it was more of a mercy killing. Slow, but merciful. <laughs> you enjoy being a rich man's toy, dear. I enjoy society, flaws and all. You people venerate savagery, and you will die, savagely. All of you. Oh, we're all gonna die, Agent. Some of us, sooner than others. Good day, Mr. Morgan. Goodbye. Enjoy your fishing, kid. 
Why you still can. <laughs> Who are they? No one to worry about, no one at all. Come on, let's pick up your things and get home. It's getting late, Jack. Your mother would be worried. Let's head back. I don't like it here anymore. Can we go now, please? Because, well, because those are disagreeable men, and I don't want them to hurt him. What did they mean about Mac? Is he in jail? Uh, no, I don't uh, think so. But I hope he's just fine where he is. Like I said, don't worry about them. The world is full of disagreeable men. That's why you got all of us to protect you. Folk like them. Now, how about that necklace you made? You still got it, right? Yeah, I got it. Good. Did you like fishing? It was... okay, I think. It's a lot of waiting around. It is. This necklace. Ain't that pretty? Ain't I the luckiest? Did you thank Uncle Arthur? No need. We had a good time. What's wrong? Nothing. Just met some folk. I better go speak with Dutch. Okay. Hey, you did real fine, kid. Thanks. We got a problem. What? I just met some guys out near the river. A fella named, um, Milton and, uh, I don't remember the other fella's name. Ross. Milton and Ross. And, and they are employees of the Pinkerton Detective Agency. And they know about the train and they know we're here. Were you followed back here? No. They know we're near here. And they want you, Dutch. They offered me my freedom in exchange, they did. Why didn't you take it? <laughs> Very funny. Well, what do we do now? I say we do nothing, just yet. They're just trying to scare us into doing something stupid. We have turned a corner. We survived them mountains. We just need to stay calm. Thanks again for coming fishing with me. I wish those mean men hadn't ruined it. Ah, oh, don't worry about them, okay? Okay, I'll catch you later then. Okay, Uncle Arthur. Hey, Fatso! You I just starving us? Wanted to say I'm sorry about your husband. Your home. He was worth a hundred of you thieves and murderers. I have no doubt. Okay, well, let's talk more later. Okay, Arthur. Well done, Arthur. You found. 
Stone, the Irish Terrier. Sadly, he's just a younger version of you. Please don't say that to me, Dutch. <laughs> oh, it's true. It's true. Well, I should get back to it. All right, Arthur. <laughs>